Deuteronomy 33 verse 26 says this, there is no one like the God of Jershon who rides across the heavens to help you. And on the clouds in his majesty, the eternal God is your refuge. There is no one like our God who rides through the heavens to our rescue. When I was a young boy, we lived out in the countryside, and behind our house was a forest planted with great big pine trees. My brother decided to build in one of these great big pine trees a tree house, like a play platform. I may have been six or eight years old when he built this, and I remember standing on the ground underneath this rugged old pine tree looking up, and all that the tree house was made out of was a single blue door. Like the front door of your house, this is what the tree house was made out of. It was painfully basic. I don't know how our parents ever let him do it. There was no handrails. There was nothing but a blue door laying across two branches that were growing out of this great big pine tree at the same height. And he used to climb up there, and it was like his little refuge. He was the oldest of the siblings. There was three more of us. And we all used to stand on the ground looking up at the older brother way up in his tree, in his little place of solitude, out of reach of his siblings. And he had nailed to this old tree little pieces of timber, like a makeshift ladder where there was no branches to get your feet onto. In the gaps, there was little bits of two by four nailed into this tree. Now, naturally, I got sick of looking at my brother up there. I wanted to go up there. I wanted to climb the tree. I wanted to sit on the lofty heights of the blue door tree house. So one day, I decided, that's it. Enough is enough. I'm no longer just going to stand on the ground thinking what could be up on this blue door. I'm going to climb up this tree, and I'm going to experience it for myself. So I threw my gumboots off threw my socks off, and I began to climb this tree, piece of wood to piece of wood, onto a branch, onto another piece of wood, until finally my chin came up and over the top of this blue door. I pulled myself up, and I sat on there, laid back, caught my breath after climbing up this tree, and I sat up and I looked around and my, I thought to myself, what have you done? And I realized I was so high and there was no rails and there was no way of getting down. And what I thought was going to be this moment of just absolute bliss and solitude very promptly and very quickly turned into a moment of isolation, a moment of incredible almost terror as I realized I've got myself somewhere and I cannot get myself out of it. I remember even trying to get my legs off the edge of the blue door to try and find the branches and the pieces of timber to climb my way down and my legs would dangle off and I, I couldn't find anything to put my feet on. I was, I was stuck and my siblings were standing on the ground and They're saying to me, Mark, you're stuck up the tree. And I'm saying to them, I'm stuck up the tree. And the only solution that I have is this. And I yell it down to them. I said, go get dad. Dad was a busy man. He would have been working in the orchard. He would have had some job on. So the siblings, they scurry off. And a little while later, dad appears down at the bottom of the tree. And he he looks up at me. And I... He knows I'm stuck. It's a giveaway. And then dad, he just begins to climb this tree. Like he's full grown adult and he's climbing up. My brother's rickety, half nailed on, bits of wood, 
he's climbing on these branches and you don't know if they're dead or if they're alive. And here comes my dad up the tree. Inch by inch, step by step, branch by branch, he comes up and until his head appears over the edge of the blue door and he climbs onto the blue door. He catches his breath and he says to me, we're going to go down now. And he puts me on his back. He slings me around. I grab him so tight around like his neck, around his shoulders, my little arms clinging on to him, my legs around his waist clinging on. And then dad with me hanging off his back, not just adult weight, now adult and child weight, begins to descend down this tree over the same rickety pieces of timber, the same dead-looking branches until we both find ourselves back on the safety of the ground. My dad came to my rescue when I was in a place and I had got there under my own ideas, under my own steam, under my own strength, but I was stuck in my own steam and my own strength and my own ideas could no longer get me out of this place I'd gotten myself to. It was my father who came to my rescue. It was my father who saw me. It wasn't my siblings. They couldn't help me. My friends, they were nowhere to be seen. It was my father who climbed that tree, who put me on his back and carried me back down to safety. This is what the scripture is saying, is that there is no one like our God who rides across the heavens to our rescue, that there is a God in heaven who you can call on in your time of need. And this scripture reminds us that he rides through the heavens to rescue us, not to rebuke us, not to tell us off, not to wave a finger at us saying, how did you get yourself in this mess? What have you done? Why are you up here on this blue door? Why are you in this lifestyle? Why are you in this relationship? The Bible tells us that God rides across all of the heavens, all of eternity to our help and to our rescue. You don't have to Find your own solution because you got yourself in the problem. God wants to rescue you from the place where you are today, right now. God is coming for you. No matter where you are stuck in life, locked up, no matter what is holding you back or holding you down, I want you to know right now. Now that you can call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and he will come to your rescue. And just as the night cannot hold back the rising of the new day's sun, just as the seashore cannot hold back the rising of the tide, the darkness that right now may be enveloping your world, it cannot withstand and it cannot overcome the light of Jesus Christ as it rises upon your life and the dryness that you feel on the inside cannot hold back the ocean of God's limitless love that wants to begin to rise inside of you. There is no one like our God who rides through the heavens to our rescue. You can call on the name of God. He is not just a name. He is a person and He is alive and He can find you no matter where you are. And He is coming for you today. As a shepherd searches the far reaches of his land to find a single lost sheep, Jesus Christ 
is coming for you. As a man who would give all he owns to purchase a field that is filled with a hidden treasure, so Jesus Christ gave the fullness of his life that he may purchase for you your eternal destiny and your eternal worth and your eternal salvation. Jesus Christ is coming for you today. He is crossing the chasms of pain. He is bridging the depths of despair. He is scaling the walls of your heart and He is lighting up the dungeons of disgrace that we can find ourselves living in. And Jesus Christ will not stop pursuing you. Just as my father climbed that tree to rescue me, he was not concerned of his own welfare. He was concerned about rescuing his son from the place where he is stuck. Jesus Christ was not concerned of his own welfare when he hung on the cross to redeem us from a life of sinfulness. You cannot reject him and you cannot deter him or turn him away. Jesus Christ is totally focused on reaching you and he has no intention of deserting you. He is coming for you today. He is building for you a pathway of peace. He is building for you a highway of happiness. He's building for you a roadway of righteousness, a home of holiness, a future of faithfulness, a life of love, and a place of peace. His intention is your redemption. His focus is your closeness. And His desire is to be your Messiah. His love is lawless, His love is faultless, His love is flawless, His love is timeless, and His love is limitless. Jesus Christ is coming for you today. The Bible tells us that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, that person will be saved. Not maybe, not if, not but but will be. And I want you to know today that wherever you are stuck in life, you can call on the name of Jesus Christ and He will ride through the heavens to your rescue. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you right now that you are riding through the heavens to rescue your sons and daughters from whatever we're stuck in. And I pray right now for faith to arise in our hearts to call on your name that you would save us. I thank you today. You are saving us. You are coming for us. You are finding us. You are rescuing, you're rescuing us. And you are bringing us back to the place where we belong with you. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. 